everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful, if ever so chilly, Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, the Pope, dollar, what is it, a day late and a dollar short. Uh, <laughs> with a, uh, a couple decades late, maybe. A couple decades late. And, uh, yeah, and probably I, all the dollars short. Uh, I don't know. It is, it's the Vatican. They got um, some dollars. That's they got true. dollars. But uh, yeah, he came out this week. Well, not so much with a public statement, but a clip in a in an upcoming uh-huh. documentary uh, has the Pope on the record um, uh, expressing his support for civil unions for gay yeah. couples. You and guys speaking, have all heard about it. You, yeah. you, I'm sure you. I'm sure you've caught the news. Uh, yeah, it was pretty big news. So um, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, so that's coming up later on the show. In the meantime, Dan. Yeah. I'm back from the dead. Yeah, you didn't Ooh. die of whatever whatever your mystery illness whatever was. Whatever non-COVID coronavirus I just caught. Um, are, are you are you feeling all right? I feel fine. Um hopefully you don't hear me coughing during the show, everyone. Oh. Um I do have a lingering cough from the cold and I do feel like I... my voice might be have a deeper space. Ooh. They can go to at the moment where I can kind of sexy, rrr, rrr. but um, yeah. Aside from that, I'm feeling pretty good. But um, oh, yeah, good. thank you. We got like, didn't we get? I saw at least uh, a couple emails that were yeah. like really nice, and yeah. Um, so thank you, those of you who wrote in. That was nice of you, Dan. Yes, I sent you a, a, a an image. Oh yeah, a you photo. did earlier i texted it to you <laughs> you did i was just I, like i will be referring to this later um, I, I thought you were starting a boy band is what i was pretty sure you were doing <laughs> so i i basically just want to um before i get into the story this is critical this is a critical part of the story okay in my mind which is uh we need to know who this person or, or what this person looks like right and so could you please describe for the listeners uh, the person that's in this this photo. Sh- sure, uh, as, as best I can. Uh, I'm guessing a teenager, mm-hmm. uh, or maybe yeah, it looks like a teenager. Mm-hmm. Uh, stole his hairstyle from Kramer on uh, <laughs> on Seinfeld, <laughs> I think. Yeah, um, yeah, got got a lot of big a big muff of curly hair. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd say a handsome kid. Yeah, looks like looks yeah, like sure. he was sort of brought in from central casting for uh, for a part on the new teen comedy about mm. uh, about wacky life in high school. Yeah, okay. Sort of it's wearing sort of... a polo shirt with exactly. a with with, yeah. with his cup pol- with his collar like kind of mid pop like yeah, quasi it... pop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a good look. Uh, back backpack on backpack. Yeah, looks like a teenager. Yeah. Looks like just your normal run of the mill teenager. Well, maybe a bit of a punk kid. You never know. Not not like mm, punk in, in the sense kid. of the music, but I get like, like he's he's the kind of kid who maybe has you know maybe his parents have a lot of money, but they they've they've neglected him, so he's he's been stealing from the s- local stores or something just to act out. Well, That's I what think I that get. would come a little bit as a surprise to all the people pushing for him uh, to become a saint, a Catholic saint. What? Um, yeah. Um, that that kid, uh, his name is, uh, or was, because he's passed away, Carlo Acut- Acutis. You had me speaking ill of the dead. How dare you? <laughs> um, and as this uh, story uh, points out, yeah, he... he uh, he died when he was 15, so that picture was probably taken very, very, very close R- to his death, actually. Yeah. Oh, poor um, guy. Because he, he definitely doesn't look like a youngster. You know, he's not, no. a, kid, he's not a little child. He's, no. he's coming into sort of a, you know, pre-adulthood. Um, and he, uh, he uh, passed away in 2006 from leukemia. Oh. And so it's... it's already right there it's a sad story right yes indeed um but uh he <laughs> the article points out that he was he was a normal normal teenager he loved playstation um <laughs> he liked making video videos of his dogs he oh. liked nikes and jeans sure um 
and they say that he had a, this is a strange detail um that he had an email address um, oh, <laughs> well you know the kids are doing that these days i know it's a, it's know. a little known fact but the kids are doing <laughs> they that get their email addresses <laughs> um, though you can't stop those kids from getting an email address <laughs> anyway um he has uh he has been uh beatified wow um, he is on the path toward um sainthood um his uh there's already been one miracle attributed to him holy cow um and uh and i just thought this was interesting because the article is pointing out the fact that he would be the first millennial saint yeah uh, which is oh, which is interesting. interesting and there's a lot of like just the the way that they're choosing to talk about him is really interesting um because they 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 like to point out these these people who are sort of um all on board with his sainthood mm. uh they like to point out sort of how just like he was uh, just a just a kid right and and mm. and and that uh he, what makes it says what makes it so this is somebody a reverend catholic priest speaking sure. says what makes it so extraordinary is that he was ordinary right we're telling people the guy you should be following is a guy very similar to you um and he says already carlo um he's just only been beatified but he's already um a worldwide phenomenon and oh. I, I see it is a boy band <laughs> is yeah. it, is it, well they're Justin singing his Beaver can, can eat his heart out yeah um apparently oh this is so bizarre this this part of catholicism or what am i saying <laughs> all parts of catholicism are crazy but like this is just like Weird. <laughs> the, the, the whole um, saint thing the saint thing uh so they this article points out that when he was nine uh carlo uh, began studying computer science textbooks and taught himself computer programming and graphic okay. design um in the months before his death he created a website that cataloged miracles right? oh um so his mother says carlo was the light answer to the dark side of the web um <laughs> <laughs> saying that some admirers have called him an influencer for God. Oh, um, well, she says isn't that, that sweet? That his life can be used to show how the internet can be used for good, to spread good things, right? Yeah. And so he's I, being... If I, were, if I were his mom, I wouldn't check that internet browser history too carefully. Well, get this. As part of the process to get him uh, beatified... The uh -huh. local diocese had to, uh, which is the diocese of Assisi, right? So he's oh, he's okay. a young Italian man. His family sort of split their time between uh, the UK and Italy, London oh. and UK, I believe is how the, I think I remember that detail. Uh, it's not jumping out. But um, anyway, uh, they the diocese dug into his emails, because remember, he did have an email address. Right. Uh, and yes. computer his computer search history wow and this 15 year old apparently passed the test this 15 right? year old knew how to do safe search or, or whatever it was <laughs> whatever it is to open a private v browser or yeah. whatever yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly um and so yeah so he's being um set up to be the patron saint of the internet apparently <laughs> perfect perfect we need one we need one the the internet this is what's wrong with the internet dan yeah it's not it sanctified have a patron saint so carlo's going to be looking out for us all um, well he needs another he needs an i'm sure he'll come up with another uh miracle oh. too sweet and yep. then will it oh, be yeah. posted oh. on his own website <laughs> that would be he posts that's it the himself. miracle that's that is the miracle no um so to become beatified there has to be one um miracle attributed to you right the pope has to sort of certify it or whatever it's called yeah. and so in february pope francis uh attributed the uh unexplainable healing of a boy with a malformed pancreas to carlo uh, oh, after the wow. child came in contact with one of carlo's shirts okay His shirt cure so maybe the patron saint of uh pank the pancreas as well i don't know i don't know how all this works but um as part of this whole like um 
process. They've exhumed his body so that it can be venerated. Right. Um, and it was on display in a church in Assisi. Oh, my God. <laughs> with, with his preferred wardrobe of Nike's jeans and a sweater. And so, like, the, I see what they're up to here, right? They're, they're, they know that, like, the saints that have come before are all these sort of distant um, people from a different time, right? Yeah. And that by finding somebody young who looks like kids these days yeah he's um, new he's hip he's all he's all the rage yeah this kid was totally cool right <laughs> um but but no it, like i mean it, it takes it it brings it the, the the loftiness of sainthood down out of the rafters right when it's it jeans it. It and t-shirts entirely and nike shoes and whatnot well no but that's isn't that the point is that that's a, the, 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 the the Catholic Church is looking at itself and it knows that it's alienating people it doesn't right. know why I mean all they have to do <laughs> if they would just look at the pedophile priests honestly they would know why they're alienating people <laughs> I mean maybe they're po- putting this kid up to say oh, he made it through see we, we here's like one, here's young one, people here's one we didn't you know we destroy. didn't ruin his life that was God that did that. <laughs> oh my God! Only God can give lymphoma. Father yeah, Luke. Father, yeah, what? Yeah, oh, oh, like, oh, right. Lymphoma is what? Uh, what the dude has? Did you see that? Oh, I saw that, Dan. That's that's yeah, tragic. That's All right. Bad. Well, now now I've brought everybody down, so I better. I'm bring gonna, us up. So, so I'm going to bring us up. up. I am going to bring us up. Because here's the thing. I'm going to tell you the story. This is from the Detroit Free Press of uh, of a guy, a Michigander, a pastor who had uh, more than 30 years of pastoring under his belt at the <clears throat> Christian Reformed Church. Now, you and I have said a number of times that uh, it's shocking that Christians, people who profess the religion of jesus christ as he is represented in the bible would it would be okay with and grant their assent to a monster like donald trump right it is a shock that anyone could could hold both of those two things in their head at the same time the cognitive <laughs> dissonance is astounding yeah they're well, good at it it's part it's part of the it's part of being christian isn't it yeah you'd think uh well, not according to Pastor Keith Keith Manis, who apparently walked away. He left pastoring. He left his church and quit because for all of his preaching, he realized that most of his congregation was still Trump supporting and he couldn't handle it. And he couldn't talk them out of it. He couldn't, no matter what. Yeah, he couldn't talk them out of it. He couldn't do anything about it, and he was so upset by it that he quit his job. Hmm. And I got to say, that is a bold damn move. Now, I'm guessing he's going to go and find a place to pastor somewhere else or whatever, but... Someplace more liberal. Yeah, but that's that's actually a pretty powerful move right there. What's interesting is also, like, I mean, I said someplace more liberal and immediately was just like, well, maybe not, right? Like, a lot of conservatives... Uh, with integrity right right look at trump and go yeah no i can't i can't right sure and so it's, it, yeah i mean someplace maybe a little bit more less trumpy is, or is at least someplace go. where he feels like he has some influence because apparently and this has seemed true for a minute yeah apparently conservatism and specifically like hateful shitty trumpian style or maybe even more mcconnell style hateful conservatism is the is the more important religion to these people Mm, mm -hmm. yes they're christian but that's secondary to their being hateful uh conservatives well we talked about this a while back on the show right that like the 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 identity that people are sort of clinging to the the strongest right now is their political identity yeah right and that, that this is that it it it's sort of uh, 
it's more important to their sense of self than their religion at, at, at this yeah. present moment. Yeah. Which is crazy town. Yeah. Like that, that just seems like dangerous shit about <clears throat> to happen. Well, I mean, and it is right. Like people are, are, you know, the whole Trump thing is also the QAnon thing, right? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, these people like those, they're, those they're people... trading in, like at what point is it just going to be QAnon being preached over the pulpit and they just kind of are like, I mean, it has been, we've talked but, about but it done like, with Jesus, right? Like they're just yeah, like, right. Like they're, they officially just say, oh yeah, no, we're, we're post Jesus Christianity. Oh, they're not going to do that because they don't, because they don't have to. What we've learned is they can hold both of those things and be just fine. Yeah, I guess so. Because yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing about the Bible, right? The Bible is perfect for anybody because you can literally mold it to your beliefs, no matter how shitty your beliefs are. You right. can you can find a way to justify it biblically. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, Dan. Yes. I've got a story about people leaving things too, or leaving something. Okay. A new pew. Uh, report is out about a survey that they've done. It's part of their... Oh, the new pew. Everybody on, loves the new pew. <laughs> their ongoing religious landscape, stu religious landscape study. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this survey uh, is looking into the very sort of... Well, the, a group that just doesn't have we, we just don't know enough about, which is the nuns, the N-O-N-E-S's. Sure. Um who the, this is the group that that well as far as like this definition of the nuns atheists are a part of agnostics sure. are a part of and uh basically anyone checking who, the anybody the, who doesn't ascribe to a specific religion right the none of the above yeah none of the above check mark right and the list of religions this is the none of the aboves and um and that lumps in us of course well it's important, I think, for us to know, and thank God they're looking into, like, how this group breaks down, what are some of the different attitudes, and this one specifically is looking at why. Why have the nuns left religion, right? This is a huge question for believers. They just can't imagine why we wouldn't want to be members of, you know, <laughs> the religions that we, the horrible, horrible religions and <laughs> right. faith communities that we Why would we in. leave all of that abuse and, and <laughs> hatred just to step out into a world where, uh, where all, everything is an opportunity? Yeah. I don't know. So it doesn't make any sense. They have a nice little chart here that kind of breaks it all down and it's it categorizes atheist so there's a the atheist column the agnostic column and then the nothing in particular column <laughs> right uh and uh and these numbers are kind of interesting um the some aren't too surprising like uh and this is why again why people left the religion of their upbringing right sure and so Nobody's surprised by the fact that 82% of atheists uh, left because they don't believe. <laughs> okay. Shocking. The, thank you, Pew. Thank you. This, yeah. is, this is earth shattering. <laughs> you guys um, are doing great work. Just great work. <laughs> the agnostics, 63% uh, don't believe. And the okay. nothing in particular is Dan, 37%. Right? So this is this, this, that group obviously is mostly and i think we already sort of knew this they're these non-believer believers right or believer non-believers right they, they 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 they're spiritual not religious they believe something's out there but they really don't care right. or they do believe in god i just don't think that like going to church is going to do anything for them right right um i i think that's that's kind of that's interesting right there um Let's see, did they dislike organized religion? 10% of atheists said they left religion because they dislike organized religion. I don't think they understood the question. But um, Well, uh, also, my one of my big peeves with Pew is that I don't feel like, I don't guess that they ever check in with actual atheists to help them to write their questions. 
Oh, interesting. Because every time I read their questions, I'm always like, no, you don't understand what you're talking about. You don't know what who we are, if that's the way you're asking that. Yeah, I mean, they don't have, like, sample questions here in this article or anything. Mm. But um, I actually, um, one of the things that was interesting about this survey is that it was extremely, apparently, open-ended. Right. Like, oh, so they had to take all of these responses and all these different things that people said, and they kind of had to like figure out how they were going to categorize what that, what that thing said, what, what, what they meant. Right. Right. Um, it wasn't like, uh, you know, it was extremely dissatisfied versus, right. you know, extremely satisfied or whatever. Um, 22% of, uh, not the nothings in particulars, uh, they disliked their uh organized religion um let's see two percent again this is weird two percent of the atheists say that they're spiritual but not religious okay i I always have a hard time with that with the atheists i i just think that no that just bumped you over into that agnostic column just by answering it that way but uh, maybe and we have a hard time fully understanding what people mean by that Still haven't figured it out. I struggle anyway, with the word spiritual because I don't know what it, what people mean when they say spiritual, and I struggle with you know. And I have, we well, we've talked really about our definition thing, of atheism right? they, versus agnosticism. Yeah, well, you have you have a definition that is, is. I mean, it's not specifically yours, but it's a very specific definition, and it's different than how Pew is obviously using these words, right? right. Like, because they wouldn't be using these words precisely this way. Um, but anyway, uh, what was, was there anything else on here that I wanted to get to before I got to what people actually said? These are again, examples of reasons why people, um, are unaffiliated and this is under the don't believe. These are things that they sort of said in response. Um, they said, uh, this one person said learning about evolution, uh, when I went away to college was the reason that they don't believe. Sure. Um, Yeah, that's a shock when... I I think that happens a lot. People go away to college, especially if they've been homeschooled. I you know you we've gotten people writing writing into us about this, and they you know they they go away to college and they are sure that they are prepared to answer when that evil professor tells them about <laughs> that bad bad thinking that is evolution. And then the professor's like, "Well, we actually do have evidence to support this, and here all of it is." And suddenly they're Kaboom. like, "Oh yeah. fuck." I was not prepared. Yeah. I did not know that they had, you know, real scientific support for this. I was told it was all baloney and that I had these great answers for it. And it turns out, nope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this person doesn't believe uh, because of too many Christians doing unchristian things. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Sure. That'll um, happen. This person, um, I just realized somewhere along the line that I... Don't I didn't really believe it. <laughs> yeah. Just somewhere along the line I just didn't believe it. Oh uh, wait a minute. Who, these are this people isn't who true. who uh said that they dislike organized religion. <clears throat> yeah. Um one person said, I think that more harm has been done in the name of religion than any other area. Yep. I no longer believe in organized religion. I don't attend services anymore. I just believe that religion is very personal conversation w- between me and my creator. Oh, and that's an atheist saying that? No, these are everybody who answered oh. that they dislike organized religion. Oh, okay. Right? Um, but I think that that's, that's interesting, right? Yeah. Um, the church is this person dislikes organized organized religion because of the church's teachings on homosexuality right yeah um oh boy this person's going to hell um <laughs> the, the, an inactive believer said i don't have time to go to church <laughs> yeah okay you guess what you're going to hell because you make the time right <laughs> <laughs> or you don't i'm, if I'm something's fine with a that. priority you you make it a priority yeah right well, I'm um, fine with them not. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, Lord. Well, there you go. Uh, de- they'll figure us nuns out eventually. Yeah. I don't think that, I don't think they're there yet. I don't but think they I, have it. Well, but here's the deal, Dan. I don't know that I know entirely 
uh, who the nuns are, right? Like I know who the, I have a good sense of atheists, right? Yeah. But I don't know who all the atheists are. There's people who say they're spiritual but not religious for crying out loud, and also say that they're atheist, right? Right. Um, and that that doesn't. I'm just like mm, I, I don't know. I, that's not my brand of atheism. And I think that a lot of these things are very personal uh, experiences and sure and and whatnot. And we you know we do get up here on our little internet platform and uh speak for a lot of atheism and whatnot but um because we are their chosen leaders <laughs> but i i actually want them to legitimately start finding out more because there's the other half of this cohort that's just being called nuns yeah. that is very different from us right yeah and, and so I don't all trust of these them. articles that are talking about the rise of the nuns and everything as like it's this this um um discernible you know demographic whatever right yeah that that, that that it means something specific it doesn't and we need to know more about it because my guess is it slices in more easily into like three or four different groups yeah we'll see as we I, you know Give Pew another 30, you know, or 50 or 90 years, and maybe they'll have some some good answers for us. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I'm going to take us to uh, Brandeis University. Oh. Where I, I don't remember if we reported on this, but, for, but about a year ago, they started uh, a new policy, which was because they, you know, they have a very, uh, a very strong anti-discrimination policy. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're not allowed to discriminate against anybody based on their race or on their gender or their gender identity or whatever. But last year, they added a new category to that. And that was that you weren't allowed to discriminate against anyone based on their caste. So oh. obviously, this is a, a a Hindu, a South Asian sort of concept uh, mm -hmm. that is that still even though it was even though you know uh Gandhi was supposedly got rid of the castes in India he didn't the, the caste <laughs> system is still there it's still right. uh used by people to discriminate against uh people of a lower caste this is a right. system wherein you're born into the caste that you're born into and there's no chance to get yourself out of it there's no advancing through the castes uh yeah. you're just you are what you are and for those in lower castes, that's kind. That's a pretty big bummer, you know, because it's like you know, due to no fault of your own, we all hate you. Yeah, but if you're in one of the top castes, Dan, like it's that's great. Well, that, that seems that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's it's all it's 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 nothing but peaches and roses at that point. Well, so interestingly, uh, you know, Brandeis figured. That you know, this was a woke enough policy that a lot of other colleges would be following immediately in their footsteps. Turns out, a uh, nope, that didn't really happen at all. But I, looking at it, it, I feel like it should because here's the thing: there are reports of South South Asians actually discriminating against each other. There are, you know, there are stories about like young people who find out. And here's the thing. There are like there's a there's a Hindu uh um a, a lobbying organization that is that objects to this. Uh, they say that it's uh it's basically um it's it's solving a problem that doesn't exist. It's overly it's overly complicated and they they have some good points which is they're worried that you know a bunch of white people who don't necessarily who haven't grown up in this culture won't even know the questions to ask to understand uh, whether it's actually happening whether whether you know a a claim sure. that there's a caste based discrimination mm -hmm. could you know whether that's actually true or not mm -hmm. and i get that but there are these stories of people you know people young people finding out that another young person is of a lower caste than them and then saying you know what you can't room with us anymore or you you know oh really yeah they're trying to pull that kind of shit yeah it's happening well dan i mean honestly though imagine going to another country and your roommate that's being assigned to you is like you know 
some uh, something from the wrong side of the tracks, right? <laughs> Somebody born into a family you know. that that is, according to your uh, really genuinely fucked up system, <laughs> quote untouchable. Oh God, yeah. yeah. The Dalits are literally called the Untouchables. You're not supposed to even touch them. Which, yeah. you know, in COVID times, in COVID times, that's maybe, maybe that's a good idea, but it's still not, not great. But it's more a general rule. Yeah. COVID. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not based Damn. on you're from that family. Oh, right. Right. So, yeah, I, I think it's a good policy. I think that, and you know, like, I maybe feel like that, there was maybe there are some genuine movie, issues. Right? What's that? You know, you got your, you got your upper crust, <laughs> you know. Right, kid, you know, this yeah. sounds like a good movie, and then, it like, sounds like a, a solid eighties, eighties, yeah, uh, romp of some kind, sex comedy <laughs> of some sort. Sorry, I'm completely off topic. You, you've you've basically turned the cast system I've... into Revenge of the Nerds. I I get where you're coming <laughs> from, but I don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> is that is that your whole story? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I could say that Brandeis is continuing with their with their policy, and uh, and I hope that it catches on because, frankly, apparently, still in in Hindu uh, uh, cultures in, in Hindu groups in the United States, it's still a problem. Yeah, I mean, what they need to do is just make sure that they're very open to feedback and to making sure that they're like, you know, that that they're doing their best to really understand the situation and be able to adapt and whatnot. But I think yeah. their heart, their, the, the, the intent of the whole thing seems to be pretty solid. So. Yeah. I mean, I think the idea is don't fucking discriminate. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have whatever to dis- grounds you have, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think there are grounds to discriminate a, a, a particularly bad student. You can pr- discriminate against in a college and say, give maybe them a bad grade. You're going to get a bad grade. But uh, but yeah, like discrimination in any based in any on form, these classes. just yeah, that's ba- the point. based on like you know just things beyond your ability be- beyond right. your ability to change. Yeah. That's that's messed up. Just cut it out. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Dan, quite yes. a long time ago. I don't think we've talked about this on the show for a long time. Um, but we probably five six years ago talked about these uh christian groups that are doing these health cost sharing plans oh yeah do you remember this phenomenon it was was like insurance but you didn't get insured for anything right it's it's non-insurance insurance insurance. and uh, in fact in order to even get on to one of these plans you have to sign um an affidavit saying i believe it was that you acknowledge that it's not insurance and, and you, you and also the, they have could just to, fuck you over if they want to. Yeah, and exactly, and that you and you have to answer like in the affirmative that you understand that it is not insurance on like a phone call with their like phone reps, right? Yeah, like they are absolutely one hundred percent covering their asses to say we are not insurance, therefore we are not regulated like we're insurance. And oh, by the way, we don't have to pay out. Well. Yeah. Uh, the New York State uh, is, has accused a uh, major uh, organization of, of this kind. Uh, they filed civil charges against Trinity uh, Health Share, um, <laughs> and which and also Al- a group called Aliera, which is. So let's break down what this is. You have the Christian group, which is Trinity. And then you have a for-profit company that markets the plans, and that's Aliera. Okay. And they they picked a really good douchey healthcare sounding name, Aliera. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's they did a good job with that. Um, <laughs> so they're accusing them. The state regulators um, are accusing them of aggressively marketing and selling their product to consumers in the health insurance marketplace, preying on people who were uninsured. And deceiving consumers into paying hundreds of dollars per month for what they were led to believe was comprehensive health coverage, right? The idea is you you pay in and then this pays 
pays back, pays out right. if you get yeah. sick, right? Like health insurance, right? Yeah, this is exactly walks like, like health duck, insurance. Quacks like, like a duck type thing, right? Yeah. Um, and anyway, they have many examples, unfortunately, many examples uh, <laughs> of patients being left with thousands of dollars in unpaid medical bills. They uh, cite the uh, an example of a woman with leukemia who was denied coverage for an emergency hospital stay that cost uh, thousands of dollars because she was told she had a pre-existing condition. I guess the leukemia. Uh-huh. Um, Aliera denied um, a $15,000 claim for breast cancer treatment. Um, sure. Even though, uh, let's see. And there was another one that was like really good. Um, anyway. <laughs> good, in, good in the not good way. Oh, yeah. It was a good example of a terrible, terrible thing. Um, but anyway, Aliera is just outraged. They're, I, well, they're, they're like, they are clear that they are not selling health insurance and that there is no confusion about their plans. Well, until they're the is. real victims here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, they said that their plans um, would not be affordable if pre existing conditions were eligible for, for sharing. <laughs> but they are. Wow, it's quote, like they've stumbled on the problem of health insurance. Yeah. Quote. Uh, they are a legitimate option for people of faith who maintain a healthy lifestyle. Oh, isn't that <laughs> clever? Don't get sick and you won't need our uh, shitty coverage. Right. right. Yeah. Um, they said that the vast majority of Trinity's members around the country are very pleased and satisfied with Trinity's health care uh, sharing ministry and continue to uh, choose to participate in Trinity's ministry as a cost effective arrangement. Yeah. But this is the phenomenon of insurance. It's just a, it's a, it's a minority of people who end up making these kind of claims. Right. Right. Like most people go about their, their life on a day to day basis pretty you know not needing their insurance right that's they why better it works. otherwise insurance doesn't work exactly that's why it works and so they're saying that the vast majority of their their members are satisfied yeah until they have to file a claim right it's fucking brilliant right the only thing that matters is how satisfied are the people who actually needed you yeah and um, uh i'm shocked i have to say i am shocked to learn that people who engaged in a bogus Christian, yeah, not health insurance scheme, are dissatisfied and that they're not being <laughs> entirely uh, and completely ethical about yeah. about their stuff. Well, and you know, if it was just some Christian ministry that was like screwing, uh, actually, I can't even finish that sentence. Um, I was going <laughs> to say if it was just Christians screwing Christians, who really cares? Um, <laughs> But of course, it's, no. it's it's a huge problem, and one that's going to be exacerbated even more by the fact that the Trump administration, <laughs> of course, of course, the Trump administration uh, is uh, is is proposing a new rule uh, that would give tax advantages to people buying coverage in healthcare sharing ministries. Oh, uh, of if course. the rule is finalized, people may be even more confused about whether this coverage amounts to real insurance. Of course, because now the government is is recognizing it, it is endorsing it, and, yeah, and giving you some sort of tax benefit for buying into one of these sham insurance scams, right? Yeah. Um, apparently, more than 1.5 million Americans have joined Christian groups um, that uh, in which they agree to share medical expenses with other members, and most all of them are just completely dubious. So fun. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well done, Christians. You're, you're just, ah, they, so they do gullible. a good job. They they're do a good gullible. job out there. I know. Uh, well, I, I, I have the report of something that may be coming. You may need to watch your, uh, your, your Netflix queue in the next uh, little while. They've made, they, uh, well, specifically one Janet Porter, has created a sitcom that is on its way. Or rather, she's created a pilot for a sitcom and hopes to be able to raise the funds to make it a reality. Okay. It is a... It's a delight, I have to tell you. Um, the, the truth is that she is an anti-abortion activist 
Um, she's president of the conservative Faith to Action group, and uh, and she is she has she is sort of behind a lot of the uh, like the heartbeat laws mm. and uh, you know all sort. Basically, she she is working hard to chisel away at a woman's right to govern her own body uh, as best she can. And n- her new tactic, she thinks this is going to work, is to make. What I promise you, according to the uh, trailer and the couple of clips that I saw, are the w- is the worst possible sitcom you can imagine. Oh, and when I say that, what I mean is, I want you to picture just just take your your mind back to the eighties, if you will, and think about uh, any of the worst sitcoms that happened then. I'm talking bosom buddies. I'm mm, talking okay. small wonder. I am talking like you can't like just make it as bad as you can possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you know what I'm talking about. If you're in our generation, think about in think in terms of uh, he- heavy saxophone uh, soundtrack. <laughs> think in terms of bad joke. Just a barrage of really dumb jokes that don't actually make any sense and aren't related to the plot at all, but are oh, just... Oh, Alf. Okay. Boom. You got it. <laughs> you nailed it. It's anti-abortion Alf, and it is delightful. I'm going to I'm gonna send you a link. I want you to put it in the show notes. Uh, Meta, <laughs> okay. Hemant Meta over at Friendly Atheist uh, has all the clips. It is... Oh, boy. It's bad, but they do have some some heavy hitters apparently in it. Uh, Stephen Baldwin and Victoria Jackson apparently make uh, appearances. Victoria Jackson, Jesus yeah. Christ! Victoria Jackson used to be on Saturday Night Live and is now just making her way through the world as a right wing nut job. Um, <laughs> Mike Huckabee, former gov- governor Mike Huckabee, and uh, Representative Steve King make appearances. So. Uh, Really, just some A-list heavy hitters hmm. uh, on the docket, but man, oh man, it is—it's—it's it's every bit as bad as I'm making it sound, which for me is everything I want in the world. So I am—I've <laughs> personally donated. I'm hoping that they make it. Oh, I'm, really? I'm, okay. I, no, I haven't put, donated, but uh-huh. I will sign on as a uh, an associate producer if they <laughs> ask me because I want this to happen. I need to see this horrible sitcom. It's the worst thing in the world. I'm very excited about it. Well, that's okay. So it's it's anti-abortion. Yeah. How, how is it anti-abortion? I mean, I mean, give us some details. I really like, don't know. Setup? I can't tell you. It's apparently the setup is that she's supposed to be writing. She's the star of this thing, okay. which is great. I, you got to love it when someone. A who, non-actor, non-comedian lead right. in, in a sitcom. Yeah, assumes yeah, that she's going, going to be perfect for a sitcom. That's great. I mean, that's that uh, show like with Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least she's a performer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, she she's a uh, apparently a writer who's going to who's who's going to write a book about dating, and uh, and all of the wacky stuff. And there's some sort of thing about she's supposed to she falls in love with her arch enemy the son or the son of her arch enemy who turns out to be nancy pelosi i don't know it's amazing i don't have all the answers but i need it to happen so uh let's (laughs) let's all pray to the gods of how bad this could be that uh that this show goes forward in the name of jesus christ amen (laughs) so Hey, listen, if you guys have any have any word that you you know if you if you know the word on the street about this thing, please feel free to write into us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Stick around guys, there's more show coming up. Hey, Dan. Yes? 
Uh, turns out that this uh, <laughs> non Nigerian or whatever uh, favorite of ours, Pat Robertson, Ugh. is uh, he's I don't know like his whatever I... they drugs they've got him on um, <laughs> for for his memory have him like just all like up in arms and making clips and being he, all think, relevant again for some for i like... think he knows that he doesn't have long <laughs> and he has here's the thing first of all when you don't have when when your time is short uh you you try and make a legacy for yourself and second of all you can make predictions about the future with <laughs> no worries You'll because <laughs> No, you will not have to answer for this. You're going to die. So I think he has realized both of these points, and he is getting specific for us. First of all, I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean you sit home and don't vote. That, that, that means you get out and do everything you can to work. But he's going to win. That's, I think, a given. And But after he is sworn in and his vice president is mike pence then trouble is going to happen he's going to be challenged by the chinese as you couldn't believe will be faced probably with some kind of a war the north koreans are going to have nuclear weapons they're going to threaten us uh the russians are going to do everything they can uh, <clears throat> the turks have got their things going and after trump is sworn in we're going to see civic disobedience in our America that will just be mind-boggling. The, the country will be torn apart. But you talk about Trump derangement syndrome, it's going to be horrible. Because already, without anything happening, we've got trouble in the streets. And Paul said, sudden destruction is going to come upon you. And what I think, very frankly, is that the only thing that will fulfill what the word of Jesus, and I'm going to give you in a minute, is is some kind of an asteroid strike on the you know, on the globe? Uh, it's you know sudden destruction. It, it's, it's not going to be some nuclear war. We're not going to be allowed to blow this Earth up. But uh, an asteroid coming down. Uh, you know, I wrote one called the End of the Age, and it was a asteroid is about uh, one kilometer, about six tenths of a mile, weighed about three billion pounds, came hurtling down, and uh, uh, that would pretty much fulfill what jesus because he, he said it's it's an asteroid jesus christ what f <laughs> go, go back to sleep to you to your little fever dream patty oh, like man, what no what fucking I, nightmares has he been having like oh. we've all been having covid nightmares but like jesus christ i just love the fact that nothing else could do it like he, he's he's just dismissing nuclear war out of hand. It's not going to be that. <laughs> Obviously, the only thing that could fulfill this prophecy <laughs> is an asteroid. Well, and the only person the that first, can save us is yeah, uh, is, is, is Bruce Willis. Trump. Yeah, uh, yeah. But what's? I mean, I. You know what? I. I have a. I have a new wish. I have a new, real deep desire, Dan. Yeah. I just need Pat Robertson to live long enough to see Donald Trump not reelected. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say you wanted to be in the room when Donald Trump <laughs> loses, when, in the room with Pat Robertson when Donald Trump loses. Well, that Trump would be loses. nice too. No, I just, I just want him to live long enough because I yeah. mean he could go at any day, any day now. And yeah, so, like, it's true. Um, uh, yeah, he. Uh, we just need to oh know boy. that he sees it. <laughs> Oh, good lord! Good uh, lord! Well, we yeah. had some folks write into us. Uh, we did, yeah. So I'm gonna get to that. Uh, this is from Brad, who says, "I'm an ambassador for the Secular Student Alliance, and we have a Discord, monthly meetings, and other opportunities to meet, talk between college students around the country." I bring this up. Because if you do have anyone who has taken you up on running for any political office, the SSA might be a good opportunity to connect to even more atheists and people with secular values ah. in a large number of communities and at a large number of colleges and college towns around the country. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. So, yes, that's uh, that's something we're adding to the list of, yeah. uh, of resources yeah. uh, and things. It, it's been uh, amazing the overall response here and so what we're doing at the moment is we're starting to like if you go to the website like right now 
it it still is just sort of in a collecting information stage, right? right. Um, where we're asking people to, to send stuff in. But this very is a, soon, to be clear, this is about our call for pe- for people to participate for atheists to participate in the uh, in, in the, the political the democ- system in yes. the political system to run for office to Volunteer join for up campaigns yeah um, all that stuff so forth and so on um, but very soon we're going to have more resources and so the, uh, yeah absolutely like um, I, I think that's cool awesome so yes m- keep sending us your Absol- emails yeah. keep se- keep uh, keep getting uh, keep letting us, us know your, and then we'll get your something ideas. organized and get it up online that's great yep indeed all right uh krista wrote in uh this one's just to me frank so you can just you can listen okay but well it's, i let's see all right it's addressed to dan uh but i think you'll <laughs> like it hi dan please let frank know that i if i could drop off a pot of vegan chicken soup i would and Aww. i'm not just plugging veganism <laughs> uh, i i I've been listening to the show for about a year, and it is truly one of the bright spots of my week. Oh. Listening today, uh, I always download the show and save them for a rare window of an, un- an uninterrupted hour so that I can savor the laughter and really benefit from the diffusion of dogma-induced angst. I was alarmed by the news of Frank's illness, oh. and I had one of those knee-jerk tendencies to want to call on a higher power for his speedy <laughs> recovery. Rest assured, I am not praying for him. Thank you. I am doing whatever it is we do in lieu of prayer. (laughs) You and Frank are beacons of light in a dark age. Oh, my God. I actually responded to Krista. Oh, you did? Yeah. And I Uh, said, um, in in lieu of prayer, you are doing exactly what you should be doing. You're reaching out to the person and you're saying, I'm thinking of you and I wish you well. And, And I think, you know, like, what do we do as atheists? We do things. Right? Yeah, we don't we actually pray about it. We actually write people a nice message, and so thank you, Krista. That, that was really sweet. Yeah, uh, this is uh, from Jay, who says Frank and Dan. Ten years ago, I was staying in Seoul. I assume that's the South Korean Seoul. Uh, <laughs> after a late night out at bars, a few of us were stumbling our way back to the hostel when we came across this really fancy outer wall of an overly large house in an already affluent area. In our drunken confusion, we were very perplexed about what this complex was, so I turned the corner, and that's when I saw the sign. I was the only person that spoke Korean in the group, so they had to settle settle me down enough so that I could tell them what the sign read. This is the Mormon temple! I gotta go pee on it, I proclaimed, as I had <laughs> as I had the whole thing as if I had the whole thing planned out or was a serial holy place urinator. I sprinted <laughs> up to the outer wall and peed all over it, then nonchalantly walked back to the group and we continued in our drunken stroll home. Huh. Fuck you, Mormon Church, your temple is my toilet, <laughs> says Jay. <laughs> Did I call for people to mm. tell me about how they desecrated churches? I don't remember I doing it. Maybe but I, I because think I we must got have a couple done. voicemails this week that we're not gonna, we won't play. But like, um, uh, <laughs> there also were stories of like people doing things to churches, and I'm like, I mean, one of them, I was just like, I think for your sake, we're not gonna play this. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't admit. <laughs> To certain things. Shouldn't be admitting that. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I apologize, listeners. Uh, I don't listen to the show very often, so I don't necessarily. <laughs> I just say whatever I say, and then it's gone. I let it go into the ether. So, yeah, thanks, thanks for that, Jay. Uh, well, we had some people uh, give to us some of the hmm. better people uh, in in our sphere. Uh, so I have a couple people to thank real quick. Awesome. Um, Esme, thank you so much for your one-time contribution. Nice. And also, Robert, uh, thank you guys both for your one-time contributions. And then you have some people to thank as well. Yeah, the, uh, we have some uh, new patrons on Patreon. These people went to thankgodimatheist.com and clicked on the support tab. Uh, and uh, two of them signed up to be teachers. Oh. Uh, those uh, people are Craig and Hannah. So thank you oh, to well both you guys. you. And uh, and then we have a new elder, Elder Chris. 
Oh, well. Well yeah. done. We, well all done, the way up Chris. into the Melchizedek priesthood. Yeah. That's the good one. Yeah. So uh, Chris is able to like go knocking doors now. So. <laughs> yeah. Good for and, you, Chris. And and use rancid oil to give blessings to people. So <laughs> really good stuff is happening in Chris's world. <laughs> and as always, Dan, our Lord and Savior, our top donor, Davis. Davis, still the reigning champion. Thank of, you so much. Of the patron world. We thanks to all of our patrons. You guys are amazing. More show. More show up. to come. Oh. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dan. Hey. Uh, Pope Francis. Yes. Who, if you'll recall, what? He's been he's been on the throne for, what, eight years? Something like that? I don't know. I mean, we were years? doing the show when it happened. So but I think it was so barely. I think it was early days. So I'm going to say <laughs> seven or eight years ago. There's no way to tell. There, we, yeah, we couldn't possibly look it up. But um, <laughs> no, like when he first became Pope, I remember us just being sort of being excited at the possibility that he was somehow going to be sort of a, a different pope right he seemed that there was there that there were, or it seemed that there was potential for him to kind of break out of like the the dull boring and well if like, nothing else at least he wasn't part of the not the hitler youth so yeah there there was that and he kind of a step up from benedict anyway yeah. <laughs> and he rejected a lot of the trappings of the papacy, right? He doesn't yeah. like, he doesn't really like the the Prada shoes and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, he did seem like a, a pretty stark contrast to and, old Ben. And a lot of people thought that maybe he could be a reformer of some kind, right? And then mm. he's just kind of sat in on 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 the Pope throne and um, not been. I don't know. Here's he's, the thing. Here's I, what what as far has as happened. Reformers go. He's a little disappointing. Well, my my sense of his entire papacy has been he says something that mm -hmm. we all get excited about mm. and then does exactly nothing about it. Yeah, and, and I yes. And I and then and then not only does he do nothing about it, but then afterwards the Vatican, uh -huh. which isn't a person, but somehow the Vatican right. comes out with a statement that says, he didn't mean what he said, you're misinterpreting, right. it's blah, 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 and because, takes it away. Whatever because, nice thing he says. Exactly. Because often these nice things are said in, in quick moments um, w with with members of the media. It's not really like a sat down, you know, sit down type thing. It's typically yeah, it's not, how it's, these moments have, have played out, right? It's not a papal bull. Exactly. It's not a, it's, it's, he's not issuing a, 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 a thing. Exactly. He's just saying it to the to the reporters on the plane or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and so they've they've been able to sort of back off of these these statements in the past. Yeah. Because they've seemed to be very much maybe not fully conceived and and they were just sort of in, in the moment. But the, this last week, I, I, I don't know that the clip is, is watchable yet, um, but um, it is being reported that there is a clip in an upcoming documentary that's, that will be coming out soon um, yeah. about, what, what was it even about? It was, it's about him. It's called oh, yeah, Francesco. It's, it's called Francesco. That's right. Um, and... He, in a sit-down interview with a journalist, comes out and very clearly s talks about um, the need, in fact, for civil unions for, for gay couples so that they yeah. can be recognized and they can have all sort of the legal protections that marriage brings, the stability that marriage brings. Um, and yeah, he said, he said, quote, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. Mm -hmm. They are children of God. You can't kick someone out of a family nor make their life miserable for this. Yeah. What what we have to have is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered. Right. Because obviously the Catholic Church doesn't want it to be marriage, right? And there's this there's this, oh my just God. this concern that like that's 
this holy sacrament, right? I mean, if you go back in time to what the '90s when this was all being so like like hashed out, mm-hmm. the churches wanted ownership of that word marriage like you wouldn't fucking believe. Yeah, they just they they would call it anything, and they were trying to carve out space for uh, for decades for something for gay people that wasn't marriage right whatever it is it's not marriage because we own that word in right. a, in a game of semantics that makes exactly zero sense they were hardcore on needing to own the word right and it turns out that what you call something does matter right like it does having something so the exact same thing but calling it something different is still insulting to the people that you're denying that other thing too especially considering that marriage is a legal contract yeah as much as it is a re- well it is a legal contract that some people also sort of solemnize at they, yeah, their church, they, they, right? they tack on a little churchy thing to it. But right. the fact of the matter is that, like, the real, the important part of the marriage is a signed contract. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's where, that's that's the meat of it, right? That's the stuff that, that he's acknowledging, that, that gay couples are being denied. Well, anyway, so this, he says this, right? Yeah. And the world goes crazy. Um, oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a, there was a guy, there was a, a bishop, uh, Bishop Thomas Tobin of Providence, Rhode Island. He was the first oh American yeah. bishop to to flip out. Yeah, he said, "quote The Pope's statement clearly contradicts what has been the long-standing teaching of the Church about same-sex unions." The church cannot support the acceptance of objectively immoral relationships. Not once thinking about the fact that the, that same church was at one point just as incensed about the idea of interracial marriage. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and this is obviously, like, the American church is obviously not going to be too stoked about this um, in general. Um, Why not? I mean, it's... it. Look... Gay marriage has been a thing in the U.S. for a few years now. Yeah, I just... none of the buildings have come tumbling down. They, yeah. None. There has been z- exactly zero problems other than the ones of conservatives' own creation. Right. I don't I'd... see why they would care, but they do. Right. Like yeah. they they still fucking care about it, and and they're like they they. <laughs> They will do their best to keep spewing their hate. And, like, it's... Yeah. So, like, I don't see this changing American Catholicism all that much at all, to be honest. Like, no. Um, in fact, it's kind of shock. I Like, what is the Pope going for here, right? Like, the, the young vote? Like, w- what is he trying to get, <laughs> you know? Like, I honestly think my take on Pope Francis, and a lot of people will, will probably write into us and tell us I'm crazy. My take on Pope Francis is that he's actually a good guy who pays attention and wants... Like, he sees the pain that the church has caused gay people, hmm. and he genuinely wants to do something about it, but he's surrounded by assholes who won't let him do anything about anything like he sees the he sees the the child rape crisis in his church and wants to do something about it and the curia or whatever won't they just won't let him do anything yeah it's insane because he I mean, he's the fucking pope yeah right? he's supposed to be able like he's the last word on everything according to them unless he actually tries to do something god's vicar on earth yeah <laughs> What what does that even mean? Nothing. Uh, Apparently, it, it if means it, if he can't get his way, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. goodness gracious. Um, so yeah, I sort of had this. I, I was like, wow, you know, the Pope, and I kind of was like, you know, we have six Catholics on the Supreme Court. What kind of hope could I? Oh fuck! There are yeah. already bigots. They're already set in their way. They already yeah, have their beliefs, right? Like yeah. And it's just like I mean, it, it would be shocking. amazing if he if he if he had some influence over them. 
it, but the shocking thing is that he doesn't. Right. The, 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 yeah. The, the, the people are just like, oh, the Pope said that? Yeah, well, fuck that. You yeah. Know. It's kind of hilarious how much they believe in the Pope until he says something that they don't agree with. Yeah. And then suddenly, oh, no, he's wrong. The yeah. Pope is the infallible Pope. Right. Is like we've got a bishop saying he's wrong. Yeah. How can it, how he is infallible to yeah. you? Yeah. You're not allowed to say he's wrong? What are you talking about? This goes back to what what we were what we said earlier in this very show, which is that politics are 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 outweighing people's views on the world these days. Oh yeah, right? man. Like the, the second religion you are... is totally secondary and the reli- and what their religious like instructors, their teachers, the people who have the authority, the people who supposedly are speaking for God come out and say in their role as the mouthpiece of God, right? That we need to find yeah. a solution for this and I think it's civil unions and people are just like, "Nah. Yeah, nah, that doesn't Literally, jive with my beli- my political sol- beliefs." He proposes the solution that was rejected in 1994. And everybody's just like, no, that's too, that's, you're being too progressive. Dial it back. <laughs> you need to go back another 40 years. Yeah. Another. So there you go. You know, I, I had, there's part of me, I, I tweeted this, I think, or I, maybe I put it on Facebook. I'm, I'm confused why the Vatican hasn't yet come out with a statement against this. Hmm. And part of me thinks that maybe what's going to happen is he's pushing them back until the American election happens, and then the Vatican will come out with a statement that says that it was wrong. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a pet theory. It, it's not based on anything. Oh, uh, but it'll be interesting to see if November 4th is when the Vatican comes out with their, uh, no, he didn't mean that statement. <laughs> we'll see. We'll Who see. Who can say? Oh, yeah. Anyway. Well, uh... If you guys have anything you'd like to say, if you grew up Catholic and you can elucidate why the hell an infallible being is considered so fucking fallible to these people, <laughs> help me. Please write into us. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Click the like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. Also, find us on Twitter at TGI Atheist. Yep. Thanks again to all of our uh, donors. If you would like to join them, please do so. You can go to thankgodimatheist.com, click on the Support Us tab. You choose how much you want to give. We appreciate you deeply. It's a win-win. And a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club and to Gordon Johnston for their music. And thanks to all of you for tuning in, kids. We love you. Bye-bye.